Yeah, baby, here we go. Now we are right back into the action for another day of the week. A very special day of the week. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Before You Bet right here on the Covers YouTube and X channels. If you're watching on YouTube right now, smash that subscribe button right down there. So this is probably our biggest show since the Super Bowl. We got Sweet 16 action kicking off today. Major League Baseball opening day kicking off today. And a couple of good looking games in the NBA. We are covering all of it. If you guys want to participate in the show, it is very easy to do so. Hit up the live chat on both YouTube and over on X. Let us know what your best bets are for tonight. Let us know what your predictions are for the World Series. Uh, if there's anything in the NHL, which we're not covering on today's show, let us know. Uh, help out your fellow viewers. Uh, give us a little breakdown. Why you like those picks? Okay. I don't know. What the hell is that? I don't know if you heard that Siri on my phone going off. Uh, okay, uh, enough small talk. We're going to start with uh, Sweet 16 in the Major League Baseball, then over to the NBA. Uh, let's bring on Ro. Uh, Ro, you had a great first weekend of March Madness. Uh, how'd you make out officially? Uh, on the whole, I uh, did pretty well. Uh, not quite as great as that uh, incredible Friday I had. Uh, second day was just phenomenal. Uh, still did really well. Uh, ended up going uh, 16 and... Uh, 16 and 10, I think, overall. Uh, yeah, so not bad. pretty good. I'll take that about plus five units there. So hoping to continue that into a second weekend here. Yeah, much better than I did. Uh, I think I'm retiring uh, for from college basketball uh, for the rest of uh, the tournament here, at least. Maybe we'll pick it up again next year. Uh, okay, uh, let's get into your picks. You have two for today, three for tomorrow. Let's start with uh, UNC Alabama, player prop you like for this game. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's a lot of player props I like in this one. Uh, we're seeing a massive total here. Uh, I think it's 173.5 right now. So huge, huge total, which means we should see lots of points from uh, both these up-tempo, high-scoring attacks. And that should be lots of three-pointers for Mark Sears. This guy's one of the best in the business. Uh, Average is more than 21 points per game. Shoots 43.5% from uh, deep. And uh, if you look at UNC's numbers, uh, they're a little bit deceiving. Uh, on the season, they rank like 50th in the country in opponent three-point percentage. But if you look over at shot quality bets, uh, which charts uh, how well teams actually defend three-pointers in terms of how closely they guard those players, they're actually outside the top 300 at allowing high-quality three-point attempts. So uh, certain teams that uh, don't shoot well, they aren't able to take advantage of that. But a team like Alabama, a guy like Sears who shoots so well, He's definitely going to take advantage of that. Uh, he's been uh, hitting uh, three-pointers at a pretty high rate. He's hit at least three three-pointers in nine of his last 14 games. And I think he's going to be red hot in this one or at least force those three-point attempts uh, once uh, UNC kind of turns this into a track meet. So should be a really good game. Should be really exciting. And I think he soars over this number. Okay, next up, we have the game with the tightest spread in uh, this round, Illinois-Iowa State. You have a team total uh, that you're on. Break this one down for us. Yeah, I mean, it's actually first half team total that I like Ooh. here. Uh, Illinois, I'm taking the first half under on their uh, team total, sitting at 34.5. Um, main reason I'm looking at it from a first half standpoint is that Iowa State is a really tough defense to figure out. Uh, that pressure, the chaos they cause, uh, it can cause a lot of uh, havoc in your own backcourt. And uh, even teams that have had offensive success against them, it usually takes them a while to kind of figure things out. And as far as Illinois goes, yes, they are an extremely explosive offensive team, really high scoring team, but they haven't really faced a lot of ball pressure uh, units over in uh, the Big Ten. Uh, you look at uh, Iowa State, they are uh, holding opponents at just under 28 points per game in the first half. Uh, they're also second in the country in opponent turnover rate. And uh, they also take away what Illinois likes to do uh, best. Uh, Illinois loves to attack the rim, uh, but Cyclones are uh, near the bottom of the country in uh, fewest shots allowed at the rim. So they're going to make a lot of tough short shots for Illinois in this one. And uh, I think the Illinois are going to have a tough time uh, kind of getting going, the early going. They might settle down that second half, though. So I'm uh, stirring clear of the full game total, but uh, first half team total under, I think it's uh, going to hit. Okay. And where did you bet that at? Over at FanDuel? Uh, yeah, got that over at uh, DraftKings, I believe. DraftKings, okay, there you go. I don't think every book might not have first half team total. So, yeah, make sure you look around. Uh, Ro, grab that over at DraftKings. Okay, on to tomorrow, Gonzaga, Purdue. Uh, looking forward to this one. You are on a total bet in this one. What do you like? Yeah, I'm uh, liking a total bet here as well. I'm just riding the over here. Uh, 
Both these teams, really, really good offenses. Uh, Zags love to push the pace. Uh, Purdue's kind of one of those interesting teams. Like they are comfortable playing a slowdown style, but they're also comfortable running and gunning. And we've seen that again in the past. Uh, been putting up a ton of points in this tournament so far. Uh, you're looking at a total that's not too high either. It's not uh, quite as intimidating as that Alabama UNC total. We're seeing the number at 154, 154.5, right around that number. And I love the over in this spot. Uh, these teams did score only like 136 points uh, when they met up earlier in the season back in November. Uh, but there were some massive outlier stats in that one. Uh, both teams shot incredibly poorly from deep. Uh, both teams also turned the ball over a ton. Uh, both those are shocking because of how good both teams are in those areas and how bad both defenses are in those areas as well. So huge outliers there. Uh, you look at the season uh, since the start of January, Gonzaga is 11th in the country in three-point percentage, uh, produced first in the country in three-point percentage over that span. Uh, both these teams are outside the top 200 at allowing high-quality three-point attempts. Both the teams are well outside the top 200 in opponent turnover rate as well. So I think we're going to see a lot of offensive success here. I don't think uh, Gonzaga has anyone to kind of slow down ED inside. But at the same time, that Purdue defense has kind of been uh, burned a lot by uh, cutters, a lot of off-screen plays, and uh, Gonzaga does that extremely well. Okay, next up, this game should do a pretty good rating. Duke-Houston, uh, just a straight-up spread bet. What do we like here? I'm taking Duke with the points here. Uh, this is one of those uh, interesting plays where, yeah, I mean, th I think the hardest thing about this is that uh, Houston – is you know probably going to have some sort of home court advantage to an extent here uh, because this is taking place in Texas. Uh, but at the same time, I like Duke with the points. I don't really trust this Houston offense. Uh, yeah, they did score a bunch of points uh, in their last game. But uh, you look at the season, just 184th in the country in effective field goal percentage. And the main reason they've uh, kind of been able to get things going on offense is they are able to get points off turnovers and they are sixth in the country in offensive rebounding rate. Problem is Duke takes really good care of the ball. They've got some experienced ball handlers there. Uh, and they also do a good job of attacking the boards, uh, limiting those second uh, chances on the glass. So I think Duke's able to keep this close here. I definitely think they have the athletes uh, to hang with Houston here. And I do think they have the outside shooting too to uh, maybe find some cracks in that Houston uh, defense. So I like Duke to cover and I'll uh, definitely take them with the points here. Okay, Ro, bring it home. Uh, your final pick for the Sweet 16. We have a player prop for Creighton, Tennessee. Who are you looking at here? Uh, Dalton Connect. I uh, love him to go over 20.5 points here. Uh, great number. Uh, we've seen it close to 22.5 for the last few games. Uh, he scored at least 22 points in 15 of his last 20 contests. This guy's been extremely consistent. He's coming off a bit of an off night, too. Uh, he scored, I think, 18 points against Texas. But what's crazy is he shot so poorly in that game. He was like one for eight from deep, four for 10 from uh, inside the arc, and he still had 18 points. So if he can score at that level when his uh, shot is off, uh, I think he's going to have a lot of success when his shot is on. We've seen him have some huge games, especially in uh, contests where Tennessee needs him to perform. We've seen that in some huge contests this year, earlier in the season against North Carolina, uh, during the SEC against some top teams like Kentucky. And I think he's in a good position to score points against Creighton. Uh, Creighton is uh, elite defense at the rim, thanks to Kalkbrenner. But they surrender a ton of shots from that mid-range and from the arc. And you look at Connect, that's where he does all his damage. He's terrific at the arc. Uh, he's also a fantastic mid-range scorer. He's in the top 15th percentile in mid-range frequency, top 10th percentile in mid-range efficiency. So I think he's going to find those spots against this Creighton defense. I think he easily goes over this number, whether or not volunteers have in cover. Okay, Rose sounds like a five and zero to me. Maybe a four and one potentially, uh, but no, yeah. I think you'll keep the good times rolling here throughout March Madness. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. Best of luck with those bets, and we'll actually catch you in about an hour. Ro and I are recording our best bets for this weekend's UFC card. But uh, make sure you stick with him. Follow him on next. Check out all of his coverage over at Covers.com. All over the uh, 2024 March Madness tournament for us. Ro, thanks a lot. We'll see you uh, and. An hour and a half here or so. Take her easy. Thanks, Joe. Best of luck. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Okay, next up we are on to Major League Baseball. Kyle Clement in the chat. He likes Houston on the first five money line. Not quite sure what the number is there. They will be favored at home. Framber Valdez on the mound taking on Nasty Nestor Cortez. And the New York Yankees. So my strategy for opening day, opening week, going to be fairly light. Probably a max of two picks a day. Uh, for the most part, we're going off of, uh, you know, stuff from last year, stats from last year, situations, splits from 
last year. So let's hope some of that does carry over. Two spots that I do like very much. Let's start in Tampa Bay, that dump Tropicana Field. What an absolute disgrace that building is. The worst building in all of professional sports. I'm going to take Jose Barrios to go over his uh, total outs of 15 and a half. So that's plus 105. Got that over at DraftKings. Plus 105 over at Bet365 as well. So this man was an absolute innings eater last season. He topped this number of 15 and a half outs in 27 of 32 starts, averaging close to 18 outs per game. He has a great track record versus raised hitters. They have a 521 OPS against him in 100 combined at-bats. He had a lone start in Tampa Bay last season, 21 outs in that game, super sharp, allowed just one run. And, you know, no red flags or anything from spring training. He looked pretty good. 138 ERA, 13 innings pitched, spring training numbers. Sometimes you have to take those with a little bit of a grain of salt considering the competition. Uh, But, yeah, I like Barrios to uh, top that number of 15 and a half outs recorded in Tampa Bay. For my second Major League Baseball pick for opening day, we'll go to Arizona. I'm going to take Zach Gallen under one and a half earned runs. That one is at plus 105 as well. So looking to piggyback off a bit of a pattern we saw at the start of last season, he had a brilliant start at home in 2023. Let's hope this carries over to 2024. Six total earned runs allowed in his first eight starts in Arizona last season. Zero earned runs in each of his first three starts at home last season, and one or fewer in six of those eight, including shutting out these Rockies who he absolutely owns. Uh, Rockies hitters have a combined 593 OPS and 124 combined at-bats against them. Just one home run. And that's pretty impressive considering a lot of those at-bats took place at Coors Field. And speaking of Coors Field, when the Rockies go on the road, last season at least, I don't think their lineup is much better this season by any means, but last year they were at maybe Major League Baseball's worst team on the road offensively, but definitely the National League's worst team on the road. Dead last in WRC Plus in all of Major League Baseball, 29th in OPS, both for the season and in the second half. So I like Gallon to get off to a good start at home with uh, the dinky Colorado Rockies in town. Okay, let's shift gears to the NBA. Just two games tonight. Some pretty good-looking betting opportunities. John Mettler, let's bring him in. There he is, the ass man, looking pretty good. Mettler, how are we doing? Good. Opening day, sun shining, and uh, NBA player props a bit on. Can't get much better than that. Yeah, our resident uh, Detroit Tigers fan. Uh, the They're Tigers had, yeah, a little bit of a sleeper pick there. I don't mind the Tigers. They had a winning record in the second half last year. Um, okay, so we have only two games, but we have five picks, uh, all props. Prop City on the show here today. Uh, let's get started here. A rematch from earlier in the week. Hawks, Celtics. Celtics are a massive favorite in this one. They blew a big lead in the last game. So out for revenge. And we're going back to the well with a couple of props here. Uh, Chris Stapp's poor Zingus. Get us started. Yeah, your favorite player. So I'm actually playing the exact <laughs> I'm playing the exact same prop I played on Monday. It is different numbers here. So it's over one and a half assists. So it's plus 106 today. We got it at minus 120 on uh, Monday. I'll kind of explain that too. So obviously on Monday, you know, this was like a Derek White was out. Drew Holiday was out. Um, this was like a 10-point spread. This is where, you know, kind of, it's a 17.5-point spread. So you're obviously concerned about Porzingis' minutes to some degree here. But like, it, you're also being compensated for, right? Like we bet minus 120 on Monday. He hit. And now we're getting plus 106 today. So just the fact that, you know, this is opening at plus 106, it kind of still gives us that probability gap that we can attack here with like these update numbers. You know, Drew Holiday was at shoot around, Derek White's on the injury report. So the Celtics should have a much better roster tonight. There's a chance this does become a blow. The thing is for Porzingis too, for me is, you know, I've bet on his props before. It's happened in blows before too. He, this can happen really quickly for Porzingis. One and a half assists, you get in the right actions. And against the Hawks and Capella and like their defense, I feel like this is that matchup where that can happen. So I'm coming right back to this Porzingis bet. The uh, probability gap. Uh, Josh Inglis weighing in on that one. Um, Okay, I'm going to go right back to the well with a winner that I hit on uh, Monday. Uh, Sticking with the hot hand, I'm going to take Jalen Brand to go over his point total, 
22 and a half points. So he's just red hot with going over these point totals. He's topped this number of 22 and a half points in 11 of his last 13 games for an average, an average of 29 points per game in that 13 game span, uh, 30 or more points six times during that stretch. And I've been putting this a lot, a lot lately in my player prop picks. Atlanta is getting absolutely cooked versus opposing guards. They have allowed the most points to guards over the last 10 games. Most threes allowed, most free throw attempts allowed to guards. Expect to see him on the line for at least a handful of freebies here. And yeah, we played this the other day. He finished with 24 points, but he probably, he probably should have at least got to 30 in that game. Uh, the game took on a bit of a weird feel. So he started off hot. He had 13 points at the end of the first quarter. The Celtics were up by 22. Then they just took their foot off the gas completely. They went, at, went on to get outscored in each of the remaining quarters. They blew that lead. They lost the game. Um, so, yeah, I like uh, Brown to keep it going here against a uh, inferior defensive team, especially when it comes to guarding opposing guards. So over 22 and a half for Brown. Uh, next up, Bucks Pelicans. A bit of a fun game. I think everyone's healthy except for Brandon Ingram, of course. Uh, get us started with uh, Chris Middleton. Yeah, so I'm going Chris Middleton over 13 and a half points, not an assist prop. Um, so I'm going over 13 and a half points. You know, this was on Tuesday. The Lakers and uh, Bucks played a double overtime game. I was kind of, I felt bad. Like people were saying on Twitter, you know, they're like, Chris Middleton just score one basket challenge. And then I went and looked at his props. He was trading at 15 and a half and he finished with 12 points in a double overtime game where he played a ton of minutes. You know, that stings, but I think it's also the reason why you come back Today, and he's opening at 13 and a half, two points lower. And that two points lower is really just our edge here. He's projected for 15.7 points. So, like, if we're playing, if this opened 15 and a half, we don't have a bet here, but at 13 and a half, we can get after this. And just from like specifically to the matchup with the Pelicans, you know, the the Pelicans, it's for Middleton, he, they're going to need his shooting. You know, the Giannis and, you know, they the Pelicans have a really strong defense and Herb Jones. He's a great perimeter defender. I think someone on the Pelicans social team has a bet on him to make all defense because they've completely flipped their whole Twitter to making sure Herb Jones makes all defense. This guy is an excellent, excellent wing defender. So when he, he'll he be able to make Lillard and Giannis make passes, I think they're going to have to lean on their secondary scores a little bit more. I think that goes to Middleton. So Pelicans have a great defense. I think they're just going to need a little more from Middleton tonight. And with this down at 13 and a half, I like the over. Okay, my favorite bet for this game, I'm going to take C.J. McCollum to go over his three-point made total. Uh, number set at the, the usual three and a half for him. Minus 111, I bet that over at FanDuel. Uh, so McCollum, he is coming in hot. Four or more threes made in five of his last six games. Five or more, three times in that six-game span. Good opportunity for him to continue this pattern versus a Bucks team that has allowed the second most threes per game. Over the last 10 games, opponents shooting the three at 38.3% against them during that stretch. And he's having a good month from beyond the arc, shooting the three-pointer at 40%. And of course, as I mentioned, Brendan Ingram is out. And his volume does get a nice bump with Ingram out of the lineup. Eight or more three-point attempts in every single game without Ingram. Uh, with the exception of one, I think he got injured. He only played, I think it was around 15 minutes versus the Miami Heat. But four or more threes made four straight times in that spot when he plays his full allotment of minutes. So uh, McCollum, hopefully he can stay hot from three. Take him to go over three and a half. Okay, Mettler, bring it home for us. Trey Murphy, what are we looking at? Yeah, it's kind of very similar. You know, you're going McCollum three-point shots. I, they're going to need all the three-point shots they can get. I'm going Trey Murphy over two and a half three-pointers against the Bucks. So for Brandon Ingram, you know, Brandon Ingram's out with an injury. He's been out the last two games for Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy has slid into the starting lineup here in Ingram's spot. So there's kind of that guarantee of minutes for Murphy, which you like, but more specifically to how the Pelicans are, you know, they've had to switch up their offense here. Brandon Ingram was doing a great job of creating offense that has now, you know, they were experimenting with Zion Williamson before at the point guard. He is the point guard. Now he had 10 assists in their last game, but against the Bucks. Bucks have size. They have great rim protection. Zion needs space to operate. That's where Trey Murphy comes in for me. If Zion's going to be running the point, he's going to need space in the middle of the court. Trey Murphy can not only hit threes. Trey Murphy can step off the line two, three, four feet and hit deep, deep threes. And that will operate. That should give Zion a lot more space to operate against this Bucks defense. Even I just think 
it'll be a scouting report thing from the Pelicans to shoot those deep threes. So you can really pull the defense out to give Zion more room to operate. Trey Murphy should get a bunch of attempts. We just got to hope he makes three. Okay, John, we have a international viewer in the live chat right now, Nikola Dimkovic. Hello, uh, Nikola. He is uh, from Serbia. And he says, I follow NBA for some years now, but I'm only starting with NCAA. I'm confused about this bracket stuff. Well, thank finally, someone who admits they're confused by college basketball. Every single person I know texting me about their bracket and, hey, did you see this in this game? And I'm since when do you watch college basketball? Everyone all of a sudden is a college basketball expert. So shout out to uh, Nicola for announcing uh, he is confused. But uh, Nicola, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your viewership. Uh, let us know what your best bets are for tonight in the live chat there. Uh, so, John, that about does it for the show today. Uh, you going to get out to any Tigers games this season or what? How far are you away from uh, the ballpark there in Detroit? I have season tickets, Joe. <laughs> oh yeah, you mentioned that. So yeah, how um, will you? How many of the uh, eighty-one games will you get out to? Uh, hopefully, like twenty or thirty. Okay. So, but um, for in terms of getting there, I'm like fifteen minutes from the border, and it's like right on the other side of the border. Like you, you could walk from if you get out of the tunnel, the bridge, not the bridge. If you get out of the tunnel, you can walk to Comerica Park. It's right there. Okay, so um, they give you much guff at the border when you're just yeah. saying I'm. They just going through super easy yeah. like going to tigers game and like enjoy the game and you come back it's like where were you tigers game have fun see you later or thanks for coming back see ya damn that's not bad so what do you do with the tickets you don't use do you resell them on uh, one of those ticket websites yeah resell them fa fr family friends i me and my friend each have one ticket so we'll split them up too a little bit so it's good okay there we go let's go tigers i'm rooting for you the al central Talk about a flat division. It needs a little bit of life. So finally, maybe the rebuild is uh, going to start to take shape here for the Tigers. Uh, Josh Inglis, I heard Detroit is a wonderful city. It is. Honestly, downtown has, has made a huge comeback. It looks really, really good. Yeah, it's made a nice bounce back. Unfortunately, they have uh, the Detroit Pistons weighing them down a little bit yeah. right now. You know, we tried to rally around them here, John, uh, earlier in the season, as you might recall. It didn't really work out too well, but uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll see. Yeah, they got a long rebuild ahead of them there for the Pistons. But uh, yeah, let's go Tigers. Let's go baseball. Let's go Sweet 16. Let's go NBA. Uh, we're going to be right back with you guys tomorrow for all of the same content covering uh, the Sweet 16, tomorrow's Major League Baseball games, tomorrow's NBA. We're going to have a much bigger slate to dig into there. Uh, so, yeah, there you have it, 12 picks across the NCAA Major League Baseball and NBA. Guys, if you like the show, it's very easy to let us know. Just hit the like button right down there. Make sure you are subscribed to the Covers YouTube channel. Uh, lots of great content over there and lots of great stuff coming up. The Masters, UFC 300, uh, playoffs, horse racing, Kentucky Derby, everything covering it here at Covers. Thank you guys very much. We will catch you again tomorrow, same time, same place. Best of luck with your bets tonight.